over uh, the holiday period. There's been a lot of Premier League football, uh, too much perhaps uh, for players who are really playing now uh, every three days. Uh, and in some cases, they're playing two matches uh, in two days. Uh, it's an incredible amount of football, particularly given the fact that uh, these players with top clubs have not really had a pre-season uh, and have had uh, an unrelenting schedule, which includes, of course, playing for their countries uh, in competitive games and also uh, in friendly internationals. Nevertheless, uh, the Premier League is uh, shaping up to be very competitive this year. Uh, there are a lot of teams uh, in the mix, uh, at least in theory. Liverpool and Manchester United are joint top. Liverpool just ahead on goal difference. We're joined now by John Giles, who, like myself, has watched all those games, or most of them. Um, John, whenever Liverpool and Manchester United are close together, particularly top of the table, uh, it um, reminds us of how deep that rivalry is, and sometimes actually deep and unpleasant. This is serious stuff, isn't it? Um, yeah. they, the, the clubs and the fans, not the clubs so much as the fans, they really do uh, dislike each other. And sometimes it's extremely unpleasant with references when the terraces are full to the Munich air crash, to the Hillsborough disaster. Uh, it gets to that level. But obviously we're not going there, but it just underlines yeah. um, how uh, real uh, the enmity is and in a couple of weeks' time, Manchester United will travel to Anfield to play Liverpool. And this morning, uh, they're joint top of the Premier League. Liverpool just uh, uh, top because of a better goal difference. Let's talk about uh, Manchester United first, John. Uh, we saw them against Aston Villa. They won 2-1. Uh, another penalty. I thought a rather uh, iffy penalty. Um where are United now, John, um, in your view? Well, they've lacked consistency. I mean, they've had a good run again. Uh, I think they've got a lot of good players, but you wouldn't depend on them in a way that you would expect leaders of the table to do. But yes. A bit, a bit, well, Liverpool are the same in relation to what they were last year in the last couple of years. So they're, they're capable of doing... Very, very good things uh, on, on a certain day and not such good things on other days. So there's a lack of consistency there in it. I think that the reason that people are challenging Liverpool this year is because Liverpool themselves have dropped a few points, like two points to Newcastle and two points to West Brom, that they haven't done in recent times. Yeah, and uh, in, I, in the same uh, time frame, two points at Fulham as well. Sorry, two points. Uh, I mean. uh, two points uh, against Fulham. At uh, Fulham, yeah. So th that's that's what they weren't doing last. So it's a very very unusual season, Eamon. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think Liverpool, because of their lack of consistency in relation to the previous two seasons, have allowed uh, the likes of Manchester United and other teams to get as get fairly near to them. Yeah. Uh, it, it makes for a better competition, but. Uh, in the long run, I know you're not asking me this, I think Liverpool will surge ahead yeah. uh, overall. Uh, but, man, you are, they are what they are, Eamon, and certain days are very, very good. Uh, I mean, the match against Villa last week was very good. I thought Villa were good. Um, there wasn't much in it between them. So they're, they're capable with the players they have uh, to do very, very well. And then, unfortunately, in the next match or two, they don't do anywhere near as well. So there's a lack of consistency there with Manchester as there has been with most of the teams anyway. Yeah, now, um, one thing I think is undisputed, um, and that is the uh, impact uh, Bruno Fernandes has had uh, since he signed for Manchester United. It's a year. It was in the January transfer window last year. Um, they paid about £45 million for him or thereabouts. Uh, I think he has been very, very good, John. I think he's a terrific player. Yeah, he is, Eamon. He's great at what he does, which is he's a goal scorer. Uh, he's a maker of goals. Yeah. And he plays in that position 
I mean, I know people early on were describing him as, as uh, like uh, Paul Scholes, which he's not. I mean, Paul Scholes was a, a midfield player that dictated the play. Uh, Fernandes doesn't dictate the play, but when you do get it to him in certain areas, he's very, very good. I've described him from the start time as a goal scorer and midfield player, yes. which he is. Not just a midfield, he's a, a goal scorer. He's a maker of goals. He's a very, very good player, yeah. Eamon. And he's been a very, very good buy for them. And you know, a, really, really good. Yeah, he, he's a leader as well, John. Uh, you can see him during games, encouraging people, uh, picking up the pace of the game when it needs to be picked up. Uh, at one time, about uh, three weeks ago, he was on a hat-trick. They got a penalty. He'd scored two. He is their penalty taker. He gave the ball uh, to Marcus Rashford and said, you, go, you take it, because Rashford had a little bit of a lean time. There's a sort of generosity there. And a collegiality that's, yeah, you know, it's very important. Um, yeah, I think he's, he's a modest type of lad. He's a team player, as they say. Yeah. You know, he's, he, he, he does his stuff, he does his own stuff, but, he, but he's, not, he's not greedy. Uh, he, he's professional in what he does. If there's another player on at, if, in a better position than himself to score a goal, he does it. No, he's, he's a top class pro. Yeah. Uh, and he's been, he's been a huge signing for. Manchester, Manchester United. There's no doubt. I mean, if you compare him, I know we go on. I'm going on, to, on about Pogba. Pogba again. You look, you're right because you know he, he if, started the last two matches. Pogba. Yeah, but if you look at his attitude in relation to the Fernandez, it's yeah. it's it's totally different uh, in a, in a, in a, in a positive way. Yes, uh, that Fernandez goes about his job, plays for the team, and it's not on his day. Is he going to do it? Is he in the mood? Yeah. He just gets out and does it as best he can in every match that he plays in. Yeah, and uh, just the other um, interesting thing, and I find this with my own observation of Manchester United, sometimes I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is out of his depth, uh, and sometimes uh, I admire uh, his good humour, uh, the way he takes the blows when they come, uh, and I kind of have made my mind up that he's they need a, a bigger personality uh, at that club to lead that club. Yet, uh, with Pochettino now going to PSG uh, and Manchester United joint top of the Premier League, for now, he's safe. Um, I think you've been uh, uh, on a similar kind of journey. You don't want to be hard on him uh, because he isn't the only leadership factor there. Woodward who's the chief executive, uh, holds the purse strings. So we don't know to what extent, do we, that Solskjaer can be blamed for the absence of players or for the fact that Donny uh, van der Beek, who they paid $42 million to Ajax for, uh, hasn't started a game yet. I think if it's not going well, he'd be blamed, Eamon. Right. <laughs> there's nothing sure, there's mm. nothing sure than that. I think he's a good lad. He comes over very well. He's a very modest individual. Uh, I, it, I, I don't get the impression from him that he's really in charge of the whole situation in, in a way, say, that Ferguson at his best was. Now, there's not many Fergusons around or many of the great managers around, but I, I, always, I, I always think he's, he looks at the team, Eamon, and uh, the game's going on, but he's not relating to the game. It, 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 it picks a team to go out play. Yeah. You know? I'd pick a team and the next time they go out, play. I don't think there's any right stuff on a Monday, right? This is what we were doing wrong. This is what we've got to put right. And, uh, you know, the, the, with the effort and, and all yeah. the various things that you want, you still got Pogba there. Uh, he still plays Pogba. Uh, I don't think that's that's a good sign. Uh, so I, I, I think he's, on a personal level, I like him. Yes. And on a professional level, uh, I still think they could do with somebody with more authority to, yes. to, to manage the team. Yeah, although um, I mean, they've tried everything uh, since Ferguson uh, retired. Um, indeed, they tried everything after Matt Busby retired before they got Ferguson in the end. And just a final thought about United. Uh, it's a big, big club, John, isn't it? With a, it's a massive institution, massive fan base, probably the richest or second richest club in the world in terms of selling merchandise. And with all of that, massive expectations. So it's a tough job. Oh, it's, a, it's a huge job, Eamon. Yeah. That's why, why you need somebody in there. And I think what's happened as well, 
Uh, I don't think he's in charge of the the, the buying the players. Uh, yeah. But whoever's doing it is actually doing a good job. <laughs> yeah. Because well, Wan-Bissaka, the right back, was another very good buy uh, indeed. Yeah. yeah, there's a few of them, I mean. They're yeah. not that they, like, they, they made good buys. So, I mean, obviously, if uh, you have somebody, I think it's, it's, it's well, it's more than, probably 90% of the job is getting the right players in. Yeah. You know, so if so, whoever's doing it, I think is they've bought some good young players. Uh, you know, Fernandez, they've got the the, the beak, the yeah. beak in that can do the job, and and uh, the, the right back, as you say. Well, I'm a saga, there's yeah. A of, yeah, there's a lot of lot of lot of lot of good players there now. Whether he's being responsible for them, I don't, I doubt it, but they are good players. So uh, the main thing is ninety percent of the job is having the right players in. So that's a start for him. So all he's got to do is manage them and manage them well. Uh, uh, I mean, if it was Ferguson that had those players again, I'd go back to that. Who was a great manager? I'd have, I'd have no problems about them doing what they need, what's needed to be done. Yeah. I mean. Okay. But on a personal level, I wish him well. I think he's a good lad. Okay. Uh, speaking of players who don't try um, and don't always put it in, Arsenal uh, went to West Brom and they won four nil. That's the second thumping Big Sam's had, <laughs> and I know you don't. Uh, have a great grow uh, for Big Sam just want to talk about a couple of Arsenal players they beat West Brom 4-0 at West Brom um, and it, it was a very impressive performance what was notable about it John um, was uh, that three young players in particular for Arsenal Saka uh, Kieran Tierney who they bought from Celtic and I thought they got a bargain for 21 million and a young fellow called Smith Rowe who is 20 years of age. He's been around a little bit. He was on loan in Germany. Um, uh, Now, he brought those players in uh, and they've won their last four games, but they were looking like relegation fodder about uh, three weeks ago. Um, Sometimes you just got to grasp the nettle uh, with some of these uh, players uh, who aren't putting it in. Uh, And Arteta has shown himself willing to do that. I mean... The most notable example is he's banished uh, Mesut Ozil uh, and his 350 grand a week. He's just put him out of the club, really. Mm. Um, Pepe, who they paid 71 million for, uh, he wasn't in the team at West Brom. He seems to have given him, shown him the door as well. Still got Obama Yang, who scored one goal, I think, since he signed his 300 grand a week contract, and Lacazette. Um, You'd have to feel for uh, Arteta um, because you walk into a mess like that. It's not easy. Another club, of course, also with big expectations. Well, a huge club, uh, Eamon. And uh, I think he, I think he, he tried to get the best out of the players that you mentioned there. Yeah. And it wasn't happening. I mean, the, the first thing you're looking for in a manager in any team is honesty of effort, Yeah. Eamon. You know, you know that, and well, all that. well, everybody knows that, really. Honesty of effort, that's your starting point. Yep. And that's what he's getting with these young lads. And I saw the match against, well, I thought they were very, very impressive yep. in the way that they played, and there was a there was a, a, a go about them that hasn't been there. Because once you're expecting experienced players to say, well, on his day, and when they do this, or if they do that, they, you, never, you never get the best out of them. No. Or if you're getting the best out of them, it's once in every three or four matches. Yeah. If you've got young fellas in, like the lads you mentioned there, Tierney and this Smith, well, I don't know anything about him. He was very, very good. But there was an honesty about them and, 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 and an enthusiasm about them. Yeah. That's the starting point in any team. And that's what he's got now. And, and, and good luck to him. I think he's a good lad, Arteta. I think his principles are good. Uh, and it's taken him a little bit of time to do that because when you go in, you've got experienced pros there. You want to get the best out of them. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But with kids coming in like Tierney, I see before the, the, the match, Eamon, did you, you see that he went out in shorts and a T-shirt or yeah. something on a freezing cold day. I mean, that, yeah. that doesn't make you a player, but it, it, it shows you an attitude that yes. that's what he's going to do. The match is the most important thing for him. And you can see him playing. I mean, you can see enthusiasm on the pitch. Eamon. You can also see, uh, in his case, John, quality. He's a very good yeah. Oh, def- yeah. He's a very, very yeah. good defender. He's, he's got a terrific left foot. And the goal he scored with his right foot, yeah. he curled it in from 20 yards coming in from the left, was a yeah. brilliant goal. And it was a good example of a footballer who wants to make things happen 
rather than wait for someone else to make things happen. And, oh, and it was an important goal. Yeah, it's just a good lad, I mean, you yeah. know, We get good lads in as they enthusiasm. Of course, they have to be able to play. Yeah. I mean, we've all seen loads of players who are enthusiastic, couldn't play. But if you get lads, I mean, the, the, the point I'm making here, there's lots of lads there that he's had in the team, like, like Ozil, yeah. who vent your, vent your talent. Yeah. But no, go. No. You know, they're just going to go out some days to play great and some days, some days they won't try a leg. You don't need them. But the lads, lads like Tierney and the lads you mentioned there, yes. you could see them, they're young lads, Eamon. First of all, they want to do, they want to play. And they want to give everything they can to the team. Yes. That's your starting point. And, yeah. and I think he's had the courage, Arteta, to bring these young lads in. And they've responded well to him. Now, John, um, I want to talk to you about Chelsea and Frank Lampard. Uh, uh, yesterday's game at Stamford Bridge, they got a hiding from Manchester City and it was a bad beating. They were 3 0 down at half time. Mm. City were absolutely were short of players. Uh, Jesus has, uh, uh, I think, a COVID issue, and um, Aguero wasn't fit to play. He was on the bench. Uh, De Bruyne ended up playing through the middle as a kind of uh, a half centre forward for a while. Um, and yet, uh, Chelsea. Um, had nothing to offer, and they're on a bad run, uh, John. And Frank Lampard is in the spotlight in the uh, press this morning, and bound to be. He spent two hundred and fifty million in the summer. Mm. Uh, he brought in Chilwell, who we both agree, I think, is a very, very good player. Mm. He bought him from um, from Leicester. Uh, Mendy, the goalkeeper, uh, which he he cost sixty million, and the guy he's. Um, Replaced, uh, cost seventy five million. He also brought in uh, Kai Havertz, a young lad from Bayer Ber- Leverkusen, seventy one million. That transfer fee with add ons could come to. He bought, um, you know, he bought a player from Ajax, uh, Ziyech. Um, he also bought, uh, notably, Timo Werner from Leipzig. Werner uh, had a buyout clause in his contract, fifty one million. Uh, between the jigs and the reels, he spent uh, quite a bit of money, John. Um, mm. And he's put them all in the team at the same time, which I think with young players is a is a mistake. However, the point I want to put to you is this. Without those players, Chelsea, he made a very good start. They qualified for the Champions League. They had a good season last year. He, he was at Derby. He did a really good job there. Uh, so far... In his career, he's looked impressive. His teams have looked impressive. And yet, they've hit a wall. What do you see? Well, he's, he's, he's not in the, best, uh, <laughs> in the best situation you could be in at the moment, I mean, A lot of money being spent. Again, you'd have to ask, did he spend the money? Um, I think he did, John. Uh, okay. I think he did okay. because his record at, at Derby, bring in young players uh, and play them. Uh, I think in this instance... He did spend the money. Um, These are not young players he brought in, Eamon. This is spending 240-odd million. Well, they, 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 well, yeah. actually, Havertz is 20. Uh, mm. Ziyech is 27. He's not young. But he also has Mason Mount in the team as a young lad. Yeah. Pulisic mm. in the team. He's an American. He's a young lad. Uh, he also has Hudson O'Dai, who came on off the bench. He's Tammy Abrahams. These are all young players, John. Yeah, uh, and well, uh, well, okay, well, we'll get, I would say he did. He, he did buy them because. But what I see there, Eamon, is a mixture of good players without the balance that you want in the team. Yes, you know what I mean. Yep. There's three or four midfield players. There's three or four centre forwards of a similar type. Yes, that's why. That's why. That's why I doubt uh, or, or throw doubts on. Did he buy those? Because you got to get a balance in a team and in, in, in the money that you're spending. Yes, you know they got a few forwards. Like Werner, as you say, uh, has hasn't done it so far. I mean, he's, 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 you'd have to give him all the chance. You've got Abraham, you've got his Rue, uh, midfield, you've got Jorginho, you've got yeah. Kante. You, a lot of good players, but they have to have a balance to it, Eamon. You know, and yeah. I don't see any balance in the Chelsea team. That's why there's so many changes. One of the things he's it. tried to do, John, uh, and you can see him grappling with the problem, is Giroud. Giroud is an old-fashioned centre-forward He's good in the air. He leads the line very well. He gets his goals. He, he can, 
you can play the ball up to him, he can hold it, he's no pace, but he's he's played him reluctantly and he's had a great run, Giroud, scoring very important goals. Mm. He left him on the bench again yesterday. Mm. I think what he wants from his forwards is movement, uh, interchanging. He doesn't want uh, an out and out centre forward that you can l- knock long balls up to. I think he's trying something and I think it's very difficult uh, to make I'm it thinking- work. Well, it doesn't sound right, I mean. I mean, you have to bring logic into it. Yeah. No matter who the centre-forward is, is he scoring goals? Yes. You know, right, Giroud has been scoring goals. Yep. So it doesn't matter if he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. The most important thing is, again, it's it's getting a balance. They've got uh, lots of lads there who are good runners with the ball, but they're not scoring goals. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, you have, to, you have to go with what you have, and there has to be a balance to it. Okay, it, 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 let the other lads do what they do and if, if you're saying to Giroud and there's an old saying in football the only things he does is score goals <laughs> yeah. you know? well, well somebody has to be doing it like no matter what balance you have in other words if, if, if the other lads are good running with the ball they're good, good at this and good at that then Giroud isn't but he scores goals Yeah, uh, Timo Werner is an interesting case John he mm. was at Leipzig he's in the German national team he's a real good finisher I saw quite a bit of him before he came to England. He's, he's lightning pace. He's a very good... And he made a real good start at Chelsea. Scored early on uh, and he looked on top of everything. The last three or four games, he has looked woefully lacking in confidence and that can happen to any footballer and particularly yeah. John to strikers. Now, he's, he tried him up, in, uh, up the middle yesterday. It just did not work. So if you if you he they got him relatively cheaply for a, a proven mm. goal scorer international level fifty one million I think was his buyout clause so they got him relatively cheaply but Havertz Kai Havertz uh, from Bayer Leverkusen uh, he's going to cost seventy one million with that on he was on the subs bench yesterday he came on late he looks a big raw talented young fella but the Premier League intensity and tempo. It's a lot for these lads uh, to get used to because it is not the same as football um, in Europe. Well, they have to be given a chance, Simon. And, and a lot of players coming in don't settle down straight away. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not unusual, and that could well be the case uh, with them. But uh, it, it's, it's a difficult situation for them. But yeah, you have to go with what's there at the moment, which is a practical team. Are we going to win matches with these particular players uh, or not? And, and wait for them then at, at a certain time to bring them in. You, you, know, yeah. you, you have to go week by week. And I, I, I didn't think it was a good move, and not being wise after the event, for Giroud not to play. Because yes. he's the only one scoring goals for them. Yeah. I mean, you know, Werner plays, like what I see of him, he's sort of on the left-hand side of the centre-forward, coming in from that particular... That's right. right. And I think, you're, I think you're right. I think he's lost confidence. Yeah. As happens with, with, with the new lads coming to a club, it takes some lads a good while to settle down. Uh, most lads it does you know yeah. and that's the case he has he's got an awful lot of talent there I mean there's no doubt uh, Frank Lampard he's got a lot of talent there but he's got to get he's got to get into a situation where he has to get a balance to the team not playing like two lads who are talented lads but playing in a similar position do the similar things and that's that's what I think he's got there at Chelsea yeah at and the moment. having spent the 250 million in the summer uh, they have the same number of points as West Ham where David Moyes mm. is doing a really, really good job. Southampton, um, mm. and in fact, uh, Aston Villa as well. They're all on 26 points. But yeah. um, the this morning, people are beginning t- for the first time to question uh, whether Abramovich will give him uh, the time uh, he, he, yeah. he, he clearly well. needs. Just a, p- a general point, John, about bringing young players into the side. People like Hudson O'Dai... Uh, Mason Mount, who I think is a very good player. Pulisic, who's an American, go- scores goals. He hasn't scored them for Chelsea yet. But bringing, say, four or five young players into a side at the same time, as opposed to having a settled, experienced team and bringing them in uh, one at a time. Do you have any view on that? Well, that's the best way to do it, Em. You know, yeah. you can introduce them bit by bit by bit. Yeah. And... Uh, but I, I think what's happened to him, to be fair to Lampard, I mean, there's been so many matches recently, not just for Chelsea, but for all the teams, yeah. that he's had to make a lot of changes. Yes. You know, 
Yeah. I mean, he, he hasn't had a chance to, to, to let these lads settle into the team. And he's got a lot of new lads there and relatively young. Well, they are young, young, young players. So it hasn't been an ideal for a, a manager to do what needs to be done at this particular time of the season. Yeah. You know? The other th- thing that struck me, uh, you, you'll remember, I think everyone remembers, Alan Hansen, who was a very, very good uh, football analyst for the BBC mm-hmm. for a very long time and was a great player. When Alex Ferguson put uh, the four or five young players into the team mm. uh, and they went to Aston Villa, Scholes, Giggs, uh, mm. Beckham, <laughs> they got beat, I think they got beat 4-1 or 3-1. And that night on Match of the Day, Alan Hansen said, you win nothing with kids. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he never really lived that down. Yeah. He never really yeah. lived that down. Uh, yeah. But that was an exceptional an exceptional it was an exceptional thing. It was it was it was different as well, Eamon, in that these were homegrown players. Yes, that that were settled in. Yes, uh, you know there wasn't that much expected of them. That and and they were terrific players. Obviously, Ferguson knew what he was doing, and and he was very brave, obviously, to do what he did. Like in Frank Lampard's case, he's buying a lot of players in for a lot of money. Yes, uh, coming in where he's, he needs to do it straight away. Yeah, uh, and it happens in football, Eamon. I mean, yeah. only two weeks ago, Arteta was in big big trouble. Yeah, you know they were saying he's gone. He's oh, in yeah, relegation. Absolutely. He could yeah. be gone, and that and that's the, the it's the nature of the game. You know, there's so much at stake now for Chelsea and Arsenal and all these big clubs. Um, that any manager, and and particularly with with Abramovich's record at Chelsea, the managers he got rid of already. I mean, right? Yeah. I think he'll give Lampard time. Myself, I'd be very surprised if he's not given time to do the job. Okay, John uh, Frank is in, I suppose, the first crisis of his managerial career, his coaching career. Um, and uh, I, I like the look, the cut of his jib. I think he did a good job at Derby and so far a very good job at Chelsea. But this is first crisis and we'll see how he weathers it. Manchester City, John, um, <laughs> they, they were swooning on Sky and it was Roy Keane, Graham Sinness, Micah Richards... Well, I expect make it. He's a good lad, funny, and and he was, you know, a Manchester City pl- player for a long time. Uh, but uh, Sunes and and Keane were swooning about City, and I thought City beat nothing. Um, okay, they did it comfortably, uh, and they were swooning about De Bruyne um, in particular. But then everyone swoons about him. Um, what did you make of them? I thought they were very good, Eamon, last night. I thought they showed something defensively that I haven't seen for a well, I don't ever seen before. Yeah, uh, uh, w- with City, this is something he seems to be concentrating on uh, more so than than he ever did before, and I think this was a big uh, uh, minus for him. I can just but confirm that, they- John. I'll give you the stats. They've conceded <clears throat> seven goals away from home and six at home, 13 goals, which is just about as better than anyone else. I mean, by comparison, for example, uh, Liverpool have conceded um, 20. So, and they've had a lot of clean sheets, Manchester City, but I think they're still terrible at the back, but sorry. Well, I didn't think they were terrible at the back yesterday. I haven't seen much of them this season so far, I mean, but I thought they were solid yesterday. I thought they were winning the ball well that they hadn't been winning it before, getting the high press or whatever, whatever we call yeah. it nowadays, and winning the ball back. I thought they were good yesterday. I thought they were solid. Um, I, I, I want to see them, obviously, again a few more times. Uh, but, but if Stones has got his confidence back, and the, the, new, the new lad, Dias, there's more, he seems to have more emphasis on defending this season than I've ever seen him before. Yeah. And I thought it worked out well yesterday. It gave Chelsea very, very little, uh, uh, very, very few chances in the game and took their chances well. De Bruyne, when he started, actually was playing more a centre forward. He was, yeah. Uh, well, certainly forward. And I thought his start was terrible. I mean, I thought his attitude was terrible. But as the game went on, he did he did a few very, very influential things yeah, he made, as he well made as scoring the goal yeah, he, yeah. And, then played, and then played well by the end of the match he, he had played well and probably was man of the match in, in my opinion but right. I thought there was something about Man City yesterday that I haven't seen before Eamon. 
Okay. That was um, concentrating on defending and defending much better than I've seen. They gave very, very little away to Chelsea yesterday. Yeah, and very uh, little. we should find out something interesting on Wednesday night when uh, the Carabao Cup semi final yes. between City and United. Uh, mm. is a, will be a very big game. It, you can't, it can't not be um, a high stakes game when those yes. two clubs play uh, the Carabao Cup. Uh, you wouldn't want to have it on your mantelpiece, would you, John? But uh, it should be an interesting game. Uh, which yeah. I, I still think, uh, for what it's worth, that City won't be contending, uh, although they're just four points behind yeah. Liverpool and United. Um, and I don't think their defending is much better at all. Maybe because Kyle Walker is down with COVID, that's what made them look a bit no, better. They defended well, they defended well yesterday. Yeah, game, I'm not sure what, they, what, what did very, they have to defend little. against? Well, that's up to Chelsea. I mean, you have yeah. to make them look bad. Um, you, you, you can't say, well, it was all, it was all Chelsea's fault. They didn't give them anything. Yeah. I mean, in other matches they played, and they gave, they gave goals away. That's, that's all I can, I'm saying from yesterday. It looks to me like they're, 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 they're putting more emphasis on defending than he has done before. But we'll see as we go along yes. in the match. But if you take that match from yesterday, Chelsea were a lot of good players on it. They didn't give them anything. They took their goals well uh, and, and, and they well deserve to win the match. We'll see, uh, we'll see as we go along. There's going to be there's plenty more matches to come okay. and especially the match against uh, United during the week. Yeah, and anyway. we, we can't forget that you are um, a Pep fan. I mean, I'm not as big a Pep fan as you are a Liverpool fan. <laughs> no, I, I don't care about Pep one way or the other. I mean, I think he's, I think he is what he is. He's won a lot of trophies. City have been entertaining in what they do. Uh, and I, I think they're good for the league. Okay. As Manchester United are, and Liverpool, of course. Okay. Now, the big uh, issue. Leeds United, John, went to Spurs uh, and they were beaten. Uh, no shame in that. I mean, Harry Kane... And Son were outstanding again. Um, Leeds had their chance. I mean, a real, uh, a real big chance actually. Um, when uh, Patrick Bamford missed a header, he could easily have glanced it into the corner of the net. It was a real good chance. Um, Bielsa was a bit unhappy after the game, um, but a still totally fascinating team to watch. Yeah, what was he unhappy about? I mean, I didn't see the. He, the way he, they played or what they no, did. No, he, he thought that uh, he thought that he gave credit to Harry Kane and Sam, mm. and he said we ran into one, but we didn't take our chances. Uh, we didn't mm. take our opportunities in the second half, mm. and that's probably fair. But uh, oh, they also had a few players missing, John. You know, they, their defenders in particular missing, um, mm. which isn't helping their cause. But they're always interesting. Oh, very, I mean, I mean, there were some parts of the game, they were absolutely outstandingly good. Mm. Um, but again, when you're, when you're on top, like they, they were on top for certain periods, you have to, you have to be scoring goals, I mean. Yeah, the, possessions that, that. the possessions that, sorry, John, to interrupt you, yeah. just to, to, to uh, back up what you're saying, uh, leads at 64% possession in the game at Tottenham, mm. which is, you know... Mm. Uh, obviously, Mourinho tends to drop back and all of that, get his teams to drop back. But that's a very impressive start. Yeah. Well, they weren't doing it going across. I'll tell you what's very impressive about them, I mean. They're, they're, you see all the, most of the teams playing and they get on the ball and it's going across the pitch, across the pitch, across the pitch. If you look at what Leeds do, they, I don't know, I, I haven't had to see more of them and see how they're doing it. But they're getting out. They're getting the defenders coming into into the hole, as they say. Yeah. And there's very, few, very, very little time that Leeds played across the back and played across the back without going anywhere. Yes. They're very good at what they do. But when you get into the position that they do and the way in which they play, I mean, what you, I, I was just thinking about it. If you had Son, Son, yeah. and Harry Kane up front yeah. for Leeds, yeah, I think they would be fantastic. Yes, it's it's amazing. I mean, he he has a great record, Bielsa, uh, in Argentina, which is his home country, of course. He also managed in Spain. He managed Bilbao, I know. And Pep Guardiola has said that he thinks he's the best coach in the world. He's certainly um, uh, brave. He's certainly um, getting in the Premier League with championship players, really, uh, mm. 
he's getting a tune out of them. Uh, and as you said before, they lose games you expect them to win, but they'll win yep. games you expect them to lose as well. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to be inconsistent, Eamon, in the way in which he wants them to play. You know? Yeah. Because what they've got, they're not going to be sitting back anywhere. No, anywhere, no. whether it be Spurs or Arsenal or Liverpool, they're not going to say like that's what he believes in going. But you have to have you have to be scoring the goals while you're attacking in the way that they do. Yes, and they don't have that. Yeah, you know the lads they have up front are just okay. Like Bamford is okay, and the few players that he has, he, 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 but he Rodrigo, yeah, Rafinha, yeah, you know Bamford. Like they're, they're the attacking players. They're, they're going to score a few goals, Eamon. Yes. But, but they're not enough. going to score as many as they should with the possession that they have. Because once you're in, having the, playing the way he plays, obviously when you lose the ball, you're going to be in trouble. You said to me... You have to be. You said something to me on Saturday when we were watching it. You said, if Don Revy saw his team playing like that, he'd have had a heart attack. <laughs> And so with a lot of other managers. Eamon. Yeah, but th- you know what I mean? like Don he, he in particular, he, like yeah, most, Don would. Yeah, we wouldn't. Then there's no way. There's no way that would have happened. Yeah, you know, it just it just wouldn't have happened. <laughs> so, what, like, what he does is the, the, what he needs is the players aiming to do it. He's got exactly. some reasonable players, and that's why they they'll do what they keep doing that all year. I mean, as we saw them at West Brom the week before. Yes, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, you know, scoring good goals, going yeah. in. So there's no, there's no fear about him at all, and that's why. If, you, if and I have to look at him again to see how are they getting out from the back in a way that the other teams are not. Right. Obviously, he's encouraging the centre halves or the centre backs to come yes. into it at the right time. Yes. And quite rightly too, and release them from there. But if you see most other teams playing now, I mean, it's got across the right back to the centre back to the left back and back across yeah, the pitch yeah. again. You don't see that with Leeds, so they're getting into positions which they did against Spurs now. Which were scoring positions, yep. and without doing it. Now you can't do that for ninety minutes, Eamon, no, against no. a team like Spurs and, and Son and and Harry Kane. Yeah, who are going to take the, like half the chances that Leeds can create. Yes, to score the goals that they did. So they 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 will they will suffer, and and they'll have good days and they'll have bad days. It would be great to see Bielsa managing Manchester United, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Imagine him having those players yeah. at his disposal. <laughs> yeah. And you had you'd had all the you know the, 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 the Fernandez, Rashford, uh, all these terrific players that they yes. have. Bamford. Yeah. yeah. That he has them making those chances. Yes. Imagine that. Yeah. No, it's something to uh, to dream about, really. And uh, it's great uh, to talk to you this morning, John, about Leeds, as we talked about them more often now when they're when they're playing. Uh, but I thought it was funny. Well, there'll be yeah. plenty to talk about them, Eamon. They'll be, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're going to be they're going to subject to a lot of talk because they'll have days where they'll win 3-0, 4-0. It'll be absolutely brilliant and they'll have days when they lose lose 3 or 4-0. But they, 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 they won't be sitting back, that's for sure. OK, John. Um, it's great to talk to you always. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. That's the great John Giles. Uh, <laughs> reminded me on Saturday uh, that Don Revy would have turned in his grave if you just seen that stuff. Um, thanks, John.